Alright, so today I'm back with a special kind of video, as it won't be a chapter review this time, but instead, a video on Rin's recent spectacular goal. I usually make videos after a goal has been made, and then I compiled the chapters that lead up to it, so that you won't need to watch three different kinds of videos to experience it in full action, and I hope that this will somewhat entertain you guys. However, before we get into it, please double check that you are subscribed to the channel, as you don't want to miss my blue lock videos. And while you're already down there, you can always leave a like and a comment. And with that out of the way, let's finally get into it. We get right into the action as we see Nanasi firing off a pass to Rin, who's currently on a roll right now. Rin traps it like he's Nagi or something because this looks sick. Anyway, he tells Nanasi to go and also calls him a weakling. After that, we see a small panel of Hyori, Kiora, and Raichi, who, in sync, look at Rin with a feeling of fear as they know that the egoist Itoshi Rin is on his way. And the next panel is honestly so insane, because just look at Rin. Rin doesn't even look human anymore, as his eyes are only focused on the goal, and his tongue is fully out. He has the ball in his feet, as he only has one thing in his mind, which is to annihilate. Before him, we see Corona, Hiyori, and Raichi all being in his way, not to mention the two loverbirds, Shidu and Kunigami, who are standing in the distance. After that, we see this absolutely wild panel, where Rin tries to get behind both Corona and Hiyori. However, they aren't like the other background characters that you can get behind in a split second as they are keeping him in check, or in check might be the wrong word as they are clinging to their lives trying to hold Rin back as they are on both sides of him. Rin thinks that it's going too slow and that's why he decides to send off an insane backheel pass to his right side where Tokimitsu is. Even though he already has his own fight with Ness, he manages to send away the ball to Nanasi on the other side. Nanasi gets the ball and after that, from nowhere. Rin decides to send himself back, breaking through the hands of Hiori and Corona, and leaving them totally confused. We see in these eyes that he has a plan in mind, as he simply says more. Now that Rin has gotten both Hiori and Corona out of the rhythm, he uses this as his chance to try and sneak behind them as he right away moves to Hiori's side and runs past them. While doing so, he asks everyone to come at him as he is ready for a real challenge. Nanasi, of course, has kept his eyes closed on Rin, and now that he is free, he sends away the ball to the superstar. Hiori has managed to get some ground on Rin and is extremely close to Rin. Hiori tries to make it harder for Rin to trap the ball from Nanas, but that has no effect on the hungry Itoshi Rin who's looking so demonic. The ball is closing in on him and to try and stop Rin from getting away with a shot, both Corona and Raichi jump before him and try to block off his shooting angle. Rin watches the ball closely with his eyes being totally consumed by darkness and his tongue being free in the air. Just then, he stomps his foot on the ground and stops himself from moving any further, and instead of shooting the ball from Nanas, he traps it with his other foot. Corona and Raichi couldn't believe their eyes, as they were almost certain that he would shoot. Rin still has Hiori's back towards him, but he uses this to his advantage as he somehow manages to roll over Hiori's back while still having the ball practically glued to his feet. He gets on top of Hiori's back before he rolls over, basically just using Hiori as a straight tool for him. After that, he drags back his leg and is beginning to go into shooting position. Before him are both Kaiser and Isagi, who are trying their best to read Rin's every move, but it's not going as planned, as Kaiser can't believe Rin's movements and decision making at all. However, it isn't only Kaiser, but Blue Lock's hero as well, as he says that he can't keep up with Rin, and just now he knows that Rin is in his range, and could score easily as he has a clear angle towards the top corner. Rin's eyes only got more serious. But the next thing shocked everyone, as instead of shooting a clear goal, he took the ball down to the ground. Both Isagi and Kaiser can't believe their eyes as they wonder why he didn't shoot, and that he could have scored if he had shot, so what was the reason for this? Rin, in the middle of the game, decides to crack his shoulder before saying that someone is wrong. After that, we see who he was talking to, as a silhouette of his brother Itoshi Sei is standing right in front of him. Sei has his arms crossed and has the same aura that Rin has. Rin thinks that if Itoshi Sai had seen the goal he was going to make, he would still have said that it was too lukewarm. Looking at Sei right in the eyes, he says that even if he scored like that, it wouldn't lead to his evolution. Then once again shocking everyone, he passes the ball backward. He says that the act of putting your strongest self into the strongest target is what he wants to do. Charles is the lucky one to receive the ball. However, like everyone else, he's in shock, but he still traps it. Rin looks back at Charles, but this time he's really giving off some demonic vibes as his eyes and aura look terrifying as he tells Charles to gather all those who can die with Rin. That sentence alone gave Charles goosebumps and his body started twitching. 
Tokimitsu can't believe what he is saying, and not even the analytic Karasu can figure out what it is that Rin wants. Reichi decides to add in by saying that he could have scored, and asks if he's just going to start over because he isn't satisfied. After that, we finally see Loki, but this time, he isn't his normal casual self, as he looks completely absorbed by Rin's play, and he says that if this were an official match, Rin would be banned for life. Noah decides to add in by agreeing, and saying that Itoshi Rin is the worst kind of egoist. After that, the match goes back into action as Rin leaps forward. We quickly see Asagi, whose puzzle pieces are starting to break and disappear from him as he calls Rin crazy. We see that Charles isn't too pleased by all of this, but decides to play along. On the other hand, Nanasi is absolutely ready to give another shot, while Raichi tells them that they are underestimating him. After that, we see a small text and someone saying that Rin is the same as he was in the U20 game. We learn that it was Asagi who says that it's even more now, explaining that this time Rin is seeking something beyond that. He says that right now, there are a few people like Nagi, Baru or even Kaiser that he feels are complete geniuses, but the current Itoshi Rin, for the first time in Isagi's life, is something that even his brain can't analyze, and he calls Rin a beast of destruction and an incomprehensible creature, which, to be fair, is a really sick nickname. Anyway, Charles passed the ball back to Rin, and he trapped the ball while his body was consumed by what I could only call spikes from hell. But these aren't just regular spikes, as all of the spikes pierce through Asagi's puzzle pieces. And honestly, this panel is just so sick, I don't actually know if I can think of another panel that matches this level. Like, just take a look at Rin, who looks so insane, and Isagi just looks a bit lost, and then of course Rin's spikes, which pierce right through Isagi's puzzle pieces. After that, we see Rin, who asks them all if they have ever played soccer with their lives on the line. He says this as he rushes towards them with the ball, this time being almost fully consumed by his dark aura. We then see this small panel of Hiyori, Raichi, and even Tokimitsu, a player from his own team. All of them look afraid and scared as Rin comes rushing toward them. Rin continues and asks if they have ever lived, believing that they would absolutely kill someone and devote everything to it, as he says that we see him absolutely devouring both Raichi and Hiyori, who can't even react to Rin, who dribbles past them. After that, we once again see a flashback to Rin playing with his toys. We also see the silhouette of Sei. After that, Rin asks for someone to give him the strongest illusion that surpasses even Itoshi Sei. He asks them to give it to him with their lives on the line. And once again, the author absolutely went crazy with the drawing, as I can't even describe it properly. Rin just looks like a beast, straight from hell, and Isagi sees this from afar, and can't believe his eyes as he's totally stunned, and is left wondering what to do next. And with that, we see Rin, who's doing everything in his power to keep the ball to himself. The commentator says, again, three times, the ball is with PXG, blue locks number one, Rin Itoshi. After that, we get a close-up of Rin's face, which is filled with a mix of determination, but also a ton of bloodlust. After that, we get a quick panel of Asagi, who says that he doesn't get Rin at all. He looks like he's lost in some alternative universe. The pieces around him start to dissolve as he wonders why Rin decided to abandon his goal in the last second, saying that he started from the beginning because the goal didn't suit him, wondering if Rin actually has gone crazy, even asking if Rin is an outright idiot or a monster. He looks at Rin and says that whatever it may be, it's for sure comprehensible. Rin passes the ball to Nanase, who has Corona right ahead of him, so he quickly sends it right back to Rin, but then again, we get back into Isagi's mind as he says that he can't read Rin for the life of him. He wonders what he's supposed to do, and how he could ever manage to stop him. We can clearly see in Isagi's eyes, that he's beginning to feel irritated, as he can't figure out what to do. He says that Rin's plays can't be predicted by logic, and that his brain isn't working at all. This new Rin is something that Isagi has never faced before. This creature in front of him is an incomprehensible being. And if Isagi is honest, then he admits that he is actually scary. I would be as well, because just look at Rin in this state. The only visible parts of him are his glowing eyes, which add a striking contrast to his dark and furious aura, which is slowly but surely consuming Rin. Rin goes with the ball towards Isagi and looks him right in the eyes while asking him if this is all that he's got. Isagi only gets more fired up by this as he scratches his teeth and looks back annoyed. After that, it really starts to get crazy as Rin decides to finally take the first step and advance, so he starts by doing some stepovers with the ball. After that, he takes his arm out to try and make it harder for Isagi to stop him. As he does that he tells Isagi to come with a resolve to die, asking Isagi to come wanting to kill Rin because with such a lukewarm existence that Isagi has now makes him disqualified to be Rin's rival. And as he says that, 
He absolutely destroys Isagi as he does the same thing Sei once did towards Rin. Rin did a backheel nutmeg on Isagi, who we can see is just lost, like Bro wasn't even able to react even a fraction to Rin's play. Though on the other hand, we have Rin, who looks like a straight up demon. I love the contrast from his image where he did the nutmeg, to when he gets behind Isagi and his aura and darkness start to appear again. I don't know what it's supposed to mean or anything like that, but I just think that it looks awesome, and with that we can say for certain that Rin owned Isagi here. Anyway, after that, Isagi tries to do something, but he ultimately falls down to the ground and can only watch as Rin runs away with the ball. Hiyori screams Isagi's name, while Reichi on the other hand, asks him what the hell he is doing, but their words aren't able to reach the broken and damaged Isagi as he clenches his fists and looks down on the ground, saying resolve and to die for it, basically what Rin told him to get. However, after that, Isagi says shut up, probably saying it to Rin, before saying that he's got it too, and as he says that, He's left his sobby attitude and instead looks like a wild beast right now as he's gotten up from the ground and starts to run. He looks at Rin from the back and says that even though it's probably different from Rin's resolve, no matter how many times Isagi's lost, even if he were to die, he will always be able to be reborn and come back even stronger. And in this small panel, we are able to see that Isagi's puzzle pieces are slowly but surely coming back to him as he says that he's Isagi Yoichi, the genius of adaptability. And now let's just look at this insane panel where we can see that the goat Isagi Yoichi is finally back in action. We see his pieces starting to work overtime to come up with a new strategy, and just look at the eyes, they are filled with determined and revenge. Anyway, after that Rin passes the ball to his side where Charles lies, he calls him an incompetent contrarian, and says that he doesn't need any more of his sloppy passes, and tells Charles not to adjust them, and to just smash it, putting his finger up and telling Charles to give him his impulse. Charles is shocked at first and doesn't know what to say before getting a mean and villainous look on his face as he tells Rin that he's tripping, before saying that he will do as Rin said and give Rin his nastiest pass ever. After that, his aura starts to once again make its appearance around Charles, and we can also see Loki in the corner whose eyes start to glow up with excitement as he says that this is good and that Charles is finally being guided. However, we quickly leave them and get to Raichi who screams that PXG is coming and for everyone to get ready. But we also see Zantetsu, who uses his super acceleration to run into Kunigami and is trying to annoy him. But to Isagi, they are all just small fries, as he has to keep close eyes on Kaiser and Rin. Rin is advancing at a rapid pace as he thinks that this is it. This is what he's been looking for. He says that they are broken and that this isn't soccer anymore, but that they should kill each other instead. Personally, I would only allow killing if it were Igarashi, because he deserves the death penalty. Anyway. Rin is coming close to Kaiser, and Charles, who has the ball, gets behind Kiora with a simple sidestep, but he still thinks that this isn't it yet. He starts running scary close to the line, but as he looks into the box and sees Rin and Kaiser, who are battling for their lives, he suddenly stops and takes the ball behind his other foot with his other one, and says that just for Rin, who's gone crazy, he deserves this Rabona cross. And this is just wild. Doing a Rabona in the most intense part of the attack is wild but I can't imagine anyone else doing it than Charles, so I guess it makes sense. Anyway, he makes the cross, and from out of nowhere, Rin takes his hand on Kaiser's back and starts to run the wrong way, which completely shocks Kaiser. Anyway, the ball is flying over all of the players, and Raichi, who is watching it closely, says that PXG drew them closer in, and then crossed the ball to a distant area, admitting that they got them. Hiyori, who is also watching this, thinks that this is a top-level technique, and that the only one able to read this pass and react is Itoshi Rin, but this does not turn out to be true as Rin gets company from our favorite freak in blue lock, Shidu Ryuse, who comes in with wings behind his back and says that he's a special devil for Rin. Rin is shocked by this, but Shidu, with a bright smile, says that he's come to kill Rin and even calls him an unofficial rival. Charles watching this from the side is ecstatic as he explains that the nastiest part of his cross is that it's a shooting point that both of them can reach, meaning they will most likely collide. He later tells them to go on and to kill each other. But that doesn't matter to them, as Shidu looks super hyped up, while Rin looks focused to the max. Thanks to Charles' incredible Rabona cross, it's now a death race for the goal. We also see Charles for a quick second, as he just looks ecstatic over what he's just managed to do. Hiyori looks over to Zantetsu and Kunigami, as he says that Zantetsu decided to block Kunigami's path, and also got uncomfortably close to Kunigami's body. This in turn made Kunigami's reaction a bit delayed, and because of that for a quick moment, the demon Shidu Ryuse was free on the battlefield and is once again seeking pleasure. Where we can clearly see here as he's trying to stop Rin from scoring and instead score his own goal, 
Both Rin and Shidu stare into each other as they also have their tongues out. Rin thinks that here he comes, the blonde pest. Rin starts to analyze it some more and concludes that if he waited for the ball to reach his targeted shooting point, Shidu would interfere and he wouldn't be able to shoot. Because of that, Rin knows that he needs to change his shooting point and he has to do it quickly. He looks at the nasty cross Charles made, which was constructed to make havoc between them, and he realizes that to get to the ball even a moment faster, he needs to do a root change, which is exactly what he does in the most vital of moments. He turns his body the other way and starts to really sprint for it. Shidu looks back in shock and can't believe what Rin is doing. He asks if Rin has finally decided to run away, but Rin thinks to himself that he would never run away from Shidu and thinks that it's a challenge to a more difficult kick. Looking at the ball and saying that it's from a high point that even Shidu can't reach, he is able to start to visualize his goal as he gets an image of a bounce shot which will lead to the ball smashing it in the left net. Rin has just gotten under the ball and says that this is it. He will now live his life and update his personal best by going further beyond what he thought was possible as he will try to reach the ball from a new high, making a new unprecedented kicked ball. But just then, something comes his way. And no, it's not Isagi or Shidu, but instead his own brother as a silhouette of Sei pops up in front of Rin. He's got Rin's darkness and rage aura around him as he comes before Rin and tells him that this is too lukewarm. Rin is confused by this and can't believe that it's happening again as he just looks at Sei, who once again, but this time with a determined face, looks straight at Rin and says that it's still too lukewarm. Rin is in shock right now as he doesn't understand how once again he's too lukewarm. He was certain that with this shot, he would be able to surpass this guy's illusion. Sei, who's still in front of Rin, says that this is his limit and that Rin can't become the world's best. Rin is lost. He doesn't know what to do because if he doesn't overcome this image, he can't evolve any further. Sei doesn't budge as he's still trying to get Rin to turn away and he tells Rin that he's still just a thrashy little brother living in his shadow. As the ball is still flying in the air and with Sei in front of him, Rin realizes that he can't do anything because Sei's murderous intent towards Rin is enough to stop Rin from coming up with any ideas to overcome it. Rin's eyes seem to have lost the glow and spark they had before, as they look lost now. The silhouette is just growing larger and more fearsome as he tells Rin to just get lost and tells Rin that he does not need him in his life anymore. Rin is so close to finally scoring a super goal, but there's nothing he can do against his older brother. He asks for someone to please come forward and give Rin a new impulse. Just then, a hand cuts through Sei's head and he later sweeps away the whole silhouette. It's none other than Blue Lock's hero and Rin's destined rival, Isagi Yoichi, who comes forward to try and stop Rin in his ways. We get a close-up of Isagi's face and his eyes are bigger and shinier than ever before as he looks right at Rin and says that he will even stake his life on this. For a quick second, Rin is confused and lost as he can just stare at Isagi but then his eyes start to slowly light up again as he sees his rival, and with that, he's gotten back his determination to score. He looks at the ball and then wonders if the shooting course is blocked, but after analyzing it, he sees that there's still a chance, but he has to act quickly as Isagi is advancing fast toward him. Isagi is coming with a killing intent as he takes his hand out and screams that he won't let Rin shoot, also calling him a freak, but you know, that's just the standard here. After that, Rin's eyes start to transform from his white normal eyes back to his dark and empty eyes. As his urge to attack is weeping up, he thinks back to the childhood program he watched where the monster put his life on the line and decides to do the same thing as he rushes towards the ball again. The anticipation is just getting bigger and bigger as both of them are trying their all to be the ones to win this showdown. Isagi grinds his teeth while Rin puts his tongue out. He says that Isagi is the one he wants to die with calling it an imagination of unprecedented destruction as he jumps up in the air. Rin is now in the air, and Isagi is close by on the ground. However, Rin is preparing his foot to shoot the ball the second it arrives. Rin has his rage instincts all around him while Isagi's pieces are flying rapidly around him, and just in this moment, Rin says that his desires and this impulse, he wants to let it all out right now, saying that it's because he is against Isagi after all, his sworn rival as he says that he finally comes in contact with the ball and is able to fire it off. However, Isagi also got in contact with Rin as he tried to jump on him, which may ruin Rin's shot. Anyway, the shot is coming closer and closer to the goal, and we see that Hiyori can't believe his eyes as Rin is able to fire it off while he and Isagi are colliding. Shidu behind Rin is also amazed that he managed to get a crazy crash shoot. We also see Raichi, who tried to get up and head away from the ball, but he wasn't able to unfortunately. This makes it so that the only thing standing in Rin's way is Gagamaru. However, 
He is facing some trouble as he thought that Rin would shoot in the open left corner, but he instead shot a high spec shot to the right corner beyond the crowd, and because of that, Gagamaru was unable to do anything, as Rin's shot finally goes into the goal and gives him his first goal in this match. After that, both Rin and Isagi fall down to the ground. Luckily, Isagi fell on top of Rin, so he came out with minimal damages, but that can't be said for Rin as we see blood on the pitch. Isagi looks up towards Rin, who has his hand close to his face, and suddenly Isagi's face gets serious as he sees him. Rin, on the other hand, wonders what this feeling that he is getting is, saying that he's blown away as well as saying that it feels so good, as he says that we finally see his face, and we are able to see that Rin has blood coming out from his nose. It also looks like it's coming out some blood from his mouth as well. But that doesn't concern Rin the slightest, as he's in shock by this new and immense feeling he's gotten. Anyway, that was that. I hope that this video somewhat kept you entertained this Saturday night, and I would love to hear in the commenters what you thought about this amazing goal from Rin. If you like Blue Lock and videos like this, then I would highly suggest you subscribe to this channel, and while you are at it, leave a comment and a like, as it helps out with the algorithm a ton. And if you are curious to see another video of mine, then please watch the video, which will be popping up on the screen now. Anyway, thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye.